It's as if 2022 is really testing my resolve to become a Czech citizen. If you've followed my channel for a while, you know that my husband and I moved to the Czech Republic sight unseen on my part back in 2012. And so this year I'm applying for Czech citizenship. But the whole point of picking up our lives and moving from California to Czech Republic was so that we didn't just let life happen to us, right? We wanted to make active decisions to make our life fun and adventurous. And this year I've been wondering, after that monumental decision to move to Prague, did we just make the same mistake that we were trying to avoid back then? Get the flat and get the job and get the visa and the permanent residency and now citizenship because that's what you do when you're an expat. That was the path of least resistance. I mean, there was a lot of resistance, mostly on the part of the Czech bureaucrats, but that's another video. So the big question that I keep thinking about as I apply for citizenship is, is Prague even the right city for us? Is the Czech Republic? What if we'd chosen somewhere else? So before I talk about my big what if, other place I might have moved, um, you should know that we chose Prague really on a whim. Um, it happened over the course of one conversation in one evening over one bottle of wine. And before I'd gone to bed, I had a ticket purchased to fly to Prague. That's how unscripted this move was that has led to the past 10 years of my life. And because it's so central in Europe, we've traveled all over the continent. And every time I go to a new city, I'm always kind of thinking as I look around, like, could I live here? Could I be happy here? And then every single time I come back to Prague, I always feel like I'm at home. Like, no, that place was fun for vacation, but this is my city. Except for one place. <laughs> John and I went to Amsterdam last month to run a half marathon, and this was my third time in the city. And every time I go there, my love for the Dutch and the Dutch culture, and particularly their city, deepens. I mean, as far as charming and magical cities go, you can't get really better, in my opinion, than Prague and Amsterdam. But the choice to move to a city should be based on more than, you know, charming lopsided apartments, or in the case of Prague, you know, majestic castles and monuments and pastel colored buildings. Living in a place is so different than visiting a place as a tourist. So in this, my third trip to Amsterdam, I really tried to focus in on the things that matter to me in a place to live and really try to compare the two. What about Prague is better and what about Amsterdam is better. And so that's what I'll get into in this video. So I didn't choose to live abroad just so I could blather on in English. Um, struggling in the native language of the country is part of the adventure. But um, struggling doesn't even describe learning Czech. I mean, Czech is just a next level difficult. And not only is Dutch easier than Czech, the Foreign Service Institute says that it takes a little bit more than half the time to learn Dutch than it does to learn Czech, but the Dutch people's English is flawless. I'd put it better than a lot of Americans. And when you're struggling in the beginning phases of moving to a place, even the first couple of years, before you know how to conjugate verbs, when you're speaking to bureaucrats and your landlord, it would just be so easy to be able to communicate with them in English. So this one's gonna have to go to the Dutch. I'm gonna go out on a politically incorrect limb here and say that the secret to having really good food in your country is your history of colonialism we really got a taste of some unique food we'd never tried. Surinamese food, if you can find it, eat it all. And while the Dutch were colonizing some of the most delicious 
places on the planet. The Czechs were being subjugated by the Austria, by the Habsburgs. So, you know, I don't know if you've ever had Austrian cooking, but it's, it's a bit of a one note. So for me personally, as much as I love a good potato, I prefer the, the Dutch food. I'm also a big seafood lover, and I got to try herring for the first time, and it was slimy, but delicious. The food scene is definitely getting more varied in Prague, but it just can't compete with a city like Amsterdam that brings in food from all over the planet. So food has to go to Amsterdam. I've never felt that I was in physical danger in Prague. Um, even the trams will give you a little before they run you over. But other than that, other than driving in Prague, it's a very safe place to be. Now, foreigners might not think that. They might go to certain places like in Zizhkov and they see a lot of graffiti or something and they think it's dangerous, but I've never felt um, threatened in any way. That was not the case on this trip to Amsterdam. So I know that I'm basing this on, you know, six days there. So it's not really a fair assessment, but in six days we had like four incidents that somewhat threatened our safety or, or spoke to like violence. We were kind of um, threatened a little bit by a really, really drunk person. Um, and he, you know, there's drunk people in Prague too, but this guy like, made some like hand motions threatening to like shoot John and he was sort of threatening the space of a woman that was walking down the street and this was first thing in the morning. So that was a little ominous. Um, and then we were walking down the street and some teenagers on bikes like kind of tried to, to swoop at us and like s try to scare us really badly. And I don't know, it just, that and just like a couple fist fights we witnessed and cops taking people down. <laughs> And these are just not things that you see in Prague. Okay, I've seen, I think I can think of one time in, in 10 years that I saw a cop take someone down, down to the ground in Prague. But in four days in Amsterdam, we were kind of watching our back. So Prague and Amsterdam both have these reputations as the, you know, kind of like party cities in Europe. Everybody thinks like, go to Amsterdam and do drugs and then go to Prague and drink cheap beer. And so the result of that affects the people who live there. I mean, it's quite common to see someone's vomit on the street early in the morning in Prague, or, you know, hear them late at night outside your window. But in Amsterdam, somehow it just seemed a little more ominous. Like I don't, I wouldn't have wanted to encounter someone that was really drunk in like an Amsterdam alleyway. This could just be personal, but it, it, just, it just felt a little bit scarier there. But of course, physical safety isn't the only thing that you have to worry about when you're traveling or getting pickpocketed. You know, some of my most valuable assets, like my bank account information or access to my YouTube channel or, you know, my personal identity, that's all online. So I've been working with NordVPN for a while and when I work with them, they always educate me about, you know, current scams that, that are being run that they help protect people from. And this one blew my mind. So do you know when you go to a coffee shop or an airport or a train station and a bunch of free Wi-Fi's will come up and maybe it's, you know, like Prague airport free. Okay, so you sign up to that one. Well, that's not really the Wi-Fi of the airport. That is a Wi-Fi connected to some dude's computer. And when you jump on it, he is tracking every single thing you do with your phone or computer. It's like you're just giving him all of your identity and information. And so when we were in Amsterdam, thankfully we had NordVPN installed on all our devices. You can install it on up to six devices. And what this does is it encrypts all of your data. So even if you're on a Wi-Fi that's insecure, your data is encrypted and it can't be stolen. That is hugely important anytime you travel. All you have to do is hit quick connect on your device and you're automatically connected. If you're interested in NordVPN's exclusive deal for DreamProg viewers, you can get two years and a four month free bonus. The best part is it's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. When you sign up using my link below, 
you help support this channel. So I thank you. I think you all know where I'm gonna come down on this one. Look, my apologies if you're from Germany or Belgium or the Netherlands. There is just not a better beer in the world than Pilsner. And don't get me wrong, I love microbrews, and Netherlands had a lot of cute little like microbrew pubs where you could get little, you know, cans of their local local brews, and those were awesome. But when it comes to the national beer, the beer that your country puts out into the world, just not Heineken. Just just know. This one goes to the Czech Republic. Now I've heard that the Dutch are penny-pinching people, and so are the Czechs. And I appreciate this on both counts because I am pretty cheap myself. But when your cheapness interferes with me being able to get groceries, it becomes annoying. So we went to several supermarkets while we were in Amsterdam and tried to pay by card. You know, we're using our watches and our phones and then finally our cards. And finally, the woman comes up to us and says, oh, we don't accept Visa or MasterCard. Is there any other card? Maestro, they accept Maestro. So this is a type of MasterCard or it's by MasterCard, but apparently it's, it's only a debit card and apparently um, it doesn't charge the shop fees or maybe the fees are a lot less than Visa or MasterCard. So all the Dutch stores take Maestro because they're too cheap to pay to have MasterCard and Visa. So all of these foreigners come and they're just like befuddled. How, how do we pay for anything? Of course, there's always cash, but you know, even in Prague, we don't use, we don't use cash very much. We just pay by card these days. The Czechs are one of the most modern places I've ever been when it comes to electronic payments. Um, we've had chip readers forever, like US b barely started having chip readers for their cards. Um, you can pay with your watch, you can pay with your phone. And the beauty of this is you can do this even in the, like, the little mom and pop vecherkas. Um, you can do this even at farmer's markets. You can pay for like, you know, a 60 crown coffee with your, with your phone. So the ease and convenience and the technological advancements of banking in the Czech Republic. You guys win this one. So Amsterdam is half the size of Prague, but it has more than twice the population density. And you really feel it. You feel it particularly because of the bicycles. Now I'm a little torn on the biking culture. In theory, I think it's awesome. I wish that Prague had a biking culture. We'll get to that in a minute. But you know, Amsterdam really has it down and they've got this intricate sort of city planning, bike lanes, walking lanes and driving and trams and they all work together that we could see. We just couldn't figure it out. So this is the threatening thing. When you're in Amsterdam as a pedestrian, you feel like you have a lot, you do, you have a lot less rights than the bikers. Like you are constantly jumping out of the way of cyclists. And they're moving fast. They're not dilly-dallying. I would never recommend that you rent a bicycle as a tourist unless you had a total destination. Because there is no time to just like lollygag about and stop and like look up at a pretty building. Bicycle riders are aggressive and they're everywhere. Now, like I said, it would be wonderful if Prague was more of a biking city, but it's right now it's very dangerous in my opinion to be a cyclist. First of all, there's just too many cobblestones. You can tweak your tire. The sidewalks are wide, but they're not meant for bicycles. Um, and the roads, there's just no room for them. It's just not a city that's, that's built for cycling. We do have a lot of these rental bikes and rental scooters popping up, but man, they need to figure something out because they are just, they're left everywhere or the, you know, the tourists, they kind of like ride full speed down the sidewalk in the wrong direction, leaving the pedestrians kind of like jumping out of the way. There's just not the same system that they have in Amsterdam. So I'm gonna have to give this one to the Dutch because they figured out how to get, you know, 
300,000 people out of cars and to, to bicycle instead, which is wonderful. But as far as the comfort and ease of being a pedestrian in this city, this has to go to Prague. Prague has excellent public transportation. I'll get to that in a minute. But that allows you to be a good pedestrian because you're never, you never feel like, oh, some place is so far, I can't walk. Because you know there's gonna be a tram, a bus, or a metro, so you can then take time and walk wherever you need to. And not worry about, you know, a gang of bicyclists that's gonna knock you over. Public transportation in Amsterdam was okay. It was fine, it was what, what one would expect in a, in a European metropolis. We had several instances where the trains broke down and we had to deboard and like find another train. That happened on the metro too. Um, sometimes trams would be late. These things we never experience in Prague. It's hard to fully appreciate how good Prague's public transportation is until you go somewhere where it's not as good, which is basically anywhere I've ever been. So for public transportation, Prague wins this one. Who doesn't love a canal? In fact, this was the whole reason that we chose to run this half marathon. I imagined we'd be running through the canals. Oddly, we didn't. We were just in a different part of the city. Another reason we chose to run this one is because we knew it was gonna be one of the flattest marathons. Which brings me to my next comparative point. I don't like flat cities. I just feel like in a flat city, you never can orient yourself. You never like know which way is north and it's easy to get lost and it's kind of uninteresting. You're just kind of like going along, you know? This is one of the most underrated things about Prague is the topography. Now this is not something that people even really notice, but it brings so much richness to the city. So we have, for example, this giant valley under the Nusle Bridge, and so you can just run across the bridge and you're looking down on top of the most amazing, you know, Czech buildings. You can go in Zhishkov, and every time you turn a corner, you can see uh, Jan Zhishka or the, the, uh, the Zhishkov Tower, and it just kind of like makes the monuments part of every part of the city that can see them. There are places in Vinohrady where you just turn a corner and the castle, which is on the other side of the river, is right in your sight. It's like the streets were designed almost like a radius to see the castle. And so you remember that you're in this fairy tale anywhere you are in the city. You're gazing up at beautiful monuments or you're looking down over the valley or over the, over the river. And it, it just adds three dimensions that I don't find in Paris, that I don't find in Berlin, and that I certainly didn't find in Amsterdam. So topography, this one goes to Prague. I used to live in Japan, and when I was there, I learned a, a phrase, an idiom, sumiba miyako, which means wherever one lives, one comes to love it. And so to ask the question, did I move to the wrong place, it's almost like, what does it matter? I've also kind of always thought that arranged marriage was not the terrible thing that modern people think it to be, because I feel like when you are thrust together with a person, or in my case, a city, you start appreciating what it has to offer. Um, it's all in your attitude. You find, you can find the good or you can find the bad. And we've spent 10 years, you know, experiencing bad sometimes, but focusing on the good. And so we've taken this into us and this is like, it's what makes Prague home. So for now, Amsterdam is going to remain a place that I love to visit, but Prague will remain my home. Let me know in the comments below what your place is. What's your place in the world, whether you live there or not, what is the place that really calls to you and you think, gosh, my life would be X, Y, Z if I lived in this place? Let me know in the comments below. Tak uvidimi se ptiště. Ahoj.